So a few days ago, I bought a set of Wolf Race alloy wheels or slot mags to uh, to fit the Cortina, and they came with these set of uh, four centre capsule wheels. Now they are a little bit beaten up in places, uh, as you can see. This one in particular has got some rough edges. Uh, the centre part of it is very dented, but these are what we we'll have to work with. I may see if I can do something with that and try and knock that back into shape a little more a bit later on but for now what I thought I'd do in this video is give these a bit of a polish and see if I can make them look a little bit better than they do so they'll go on the car. I have washed them so they are clean but uh, obviously they've uh, some corrosion on them which we're going to see if we can polish off today. Now there's any amount of ways that you can polish things like this um, you can get a, a specific polishing machine you can use a polishing mop on a drill, uh, either electric or battery. Uh, you can even use uh, one of those Dremel multi-tools with a little polishing mop or polishing head on there. And there's also the bench grinder way of doing it with a polishing wheel. All of those, with the exception of the Dremel in this case, would seem to be a bit overkill and a bit too powerful for doing something like this. Because I don't want to try and burn through any of these at all, of course. But... Even though I can use all of those, and I do have all of those to use, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be doing it by hand today using this. Now this is Solvol Audosol, um, brilliant chrome, aluminium and metal polish. I'm not too sure if you can still get this with the gold stripe on it. I do have some Solvol metal polish, uh, which has a silver stripe rather than a gold stripe around it. So I don't know if you can still get this or not anymore, but it is still good. It's a very, fairly full tube. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to polish it by hand. I have a microfiber cloth for polishing off the stuff after I've uh, put the polish on there. And I've got an old tea towel to actually apply the polish with. The reason I'm wearing a glove is when you start polishing with a cloth, the, uh, the black colour or the polish that does come off does tend to soak through the cloth and get all of your fingers and I don't really want the ends of my fingers to be covered in polish and all dark so let's get into getting these polished up I'm not going to bore you to tears by uh, <laughs> letting you watch me polish every single one of them up today I'll uh, I'll do this one and then I'll do the rest off camera and uh, show you the end results which hopefully is going to work out rather well and look a lot better than it actually does at the moment. Now of course this is something you can do yourself. Easy enough to do, cheap enough to do, especially if you're doing it at home, if you're sitting in the garage or sitting in your shed throughout the night. Uh, I'm indoors today and the reason I'm indoors today is purely down to the fact that I don't know if you can hear the wind howling down the chimney in the background there but uh, it's absolutely freezing outside being as how we're, uh, we're into November now and of course the other thing about being midway through November as we are is that you can't guarantee the light at all outside it is uh, reasonably dark at the moment maybe a possibility but uh, I might see some rain coming down, but it's... I do have a, a light shining down on a, this table in the hope that you can actually see what I'm doing. Now, this is sort of all auto stuff. You may be able to see on camera, it's given a sort of a black, a blackness to it and what's coming off on the, uh, on the cloth there. Normally, I don't, uh, I don't use this for things like this. Normally, I would use this on the uh, the chrome bumpers of the the charger and the Ranchero. But I thought I'd look around for something else to do with you. Okay, so now when I cover the rest of that, you can listen to some music and I'll speed this part up a little bit.
Right, well, that looks a lot better. You can't actually see my reflection on the other side of the camera in there. There's uh, a lot of marks on it. Obviously, it's an old, battered and beaten and, uh, and well-used centre cap. But you can see my reflection in there now on that one. And if I pick up one of the other ones, obviously, you can't see pretty much anything in that one at all. The difference between the two, if I put them both together, Obviously, you can see the reflection in the one on the right, which is the one I've just polished. Now, it's not perfect, and it probably could be a lot shinier, and you'd probably get a lot better finish if you used some kind of polish and mop or polish and wheel on them. I would think, with something this size, ideally what you're looking for is to use maybe a bench grinder with a polishing wheel, or one of those Dremel multi-tool things with a little polishing wheel on it as well, and you might get better results. But, if you haven't got any of those, and you're not really in the position to go out and buy any of those, you can do it by hand and get relatively decent results. So all I've got to do now is go and do the other three, and then I can show you all four of them together when they're all finished. And that's what they look like finished. Now, are they perfect? No, of course they're not. Are they better than they were? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> they're like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times better than they were. I run my hand across the front. You can see my reflection of my hand. Notice you can see... There's still marks in there that we need taken care of. Possibly, or more, more than likely, very definitely, you'd get a much better result if you used something like a, a Dremel multi-tool with a little polishing wheel on it, because you can get a little bit more pressure and obviously a lot more speed, which would take some of these out. Um, you could probably even sand them down with wet and dry. You know, give them a rub with a, a 500 or a 1500 wet and dry or something like that, and then a bit of tea cut and maybe then a polishing wheel, and that would bring them out a lot better. But for about an hour or so, on a Friday afternoon when it's freezing cold outside, absolutely perfect. Um, love the way they look now. You can see reflections and everything. They feel so much better. They're picking up the, the light now. But yeah, perfectly happy with those. I'd certainly put those in the car. In fact, I'll go and have a look and see what one of them would look like inside one of the wheels now. There we go then. That's what it looks like in the centre of the wheel. Shows the reflection there and there of the... Uh, the holes for the wheel nuts. Yeah, in the wheel, perfectly acceptable. And obviously, just as you're driving down the road, nobody's ever going to notice that it's still got one or two marks on it. Pretty much perfect for now. Matches the wheel really well. So, of course, now that those are done, they can all go in storage, ready for when they go in the wheels, and the wheels go in the car. But a uh, very satisfactory way, or a very satisfying way, to spend a Friday afternoon. Now, if you haven't seen the video where I bought the wheels, I'll uh, I'll put a link to that on screen now. And uh, if you've enjoyed this one, don't forget to press the like button on the way out. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see lots more budget stuff like this. And obviously all the rest of the stuff that I'm doing, all the other cars that I'm playing around with as well. For now though, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.